I try not to watch games when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm sitting at home. I sort of flip back and forth from a show to, to hockey. I don't want to watch the whole thing because I know when you're watching, you, you see what happens and you just want to be on the ice and you want to be playing and you get that itch. It was a fluke play, the way we went in the corner. It was just, the skate came up and just went right in the, right there. It was a, uh, probably one in a million that would happen. But I think uh, my time will come here soon. Once you get the fever of, of, of hoisting the cup and, and bringing it around the area and, and, and showing it around and showing it off, I think uh, you want to do it again and again. Uh, it's, not the, it's not the easiest easiest trophy to win. It's probably one of the toughest, but I think once you get there, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a habit and it's contagious. It's always nice bringing it back to your hometown. That's what everybody does. They, once you win the cup and, and you have the chance, you, you bring it back to, to where you come from so you can you can bring it around the area and let everybody see and everybody take pictures and, and, and for them to, to live the surreal life of, of seeing the cup and, and uh, having fun with it. And I remember it was just a little area uh, just under the bridge there. Uh, if you go over the bridge, I think you're out of Mimico, they say, but uh, Mimico is just a, a blue collared area. Everybody likes the blue goose, they like their beers and they go to work from nine to five and they go to the goose and have some beers. All love hockey, they love the Leafs. I know that, and uh, it's just, that's what it is. For me, I started around the local area, around here, around Mimico, and uh, I think I started out in house league, played a few years, went to uh, went to single A, then. Jumped up to double A, uh, played for the Toronto Red Wings. It, it's happened pretty quick. It's just from, like you said, from, from playing my first years in, for the London Knights and, and playing there and then winning the Mem Cup and winning the World Juniors to, to going on and, and playing my first game in the NHL to, to winning the Stanley Cup and, and then winning the Stanley Cup again. In the hockey world, it's, you, you're never safe anywhere you go. You're, you're always a, a target to be traded. If it could be a team getting rid of you or the team wants you. And I think for me, the Toronto Maple Leafs coming here was, is, is one of the best things. David, hey, hey, man, good to see you. See you as well. I'm going to see what door you're turning into. He's going all the way to the end. Okay, we'll see you on the we'll way. See you in a bit, yeah. Thank you. When it happened, I think it was just me and uh, Dan Carcillo were hanging out, watching, watching the draft. I sort of, sort of knew if something was going on, something was brewing. You can hear some, some rumors going around. So we sort of went through the first period, and nothing happened. And sort of sat around there, tried to, was going to take a nap. And, uh, so we were just hanging out on the couch, and two minutes later, I got a call from Stan Bowman saying I was going to Toronto. So I was, uh, 
it was a sad day leaving Chicago, but I think uh, the tears were really uh, washed away because I was coming back home to Toronto. When you watch uh, guys like Matt Sundin, all those guys that, that play, uh, and now that you're sort of in the same room that they were uh, when they play and, and see what goes on, and, and it's, uh, it is surreal. And it's, it's, to be here, it's a privilege to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's a privilege. It's, a, it's probably one of the best hockey city in, in all of hockey, and this is where the hockey mecca is, is, is to play here. He immigrated over from, from Scotland in 86, just when I was born, and uh, they both came over here, and they didn't know a, a lick about hockey. I think it was more about soccer and, and, and football over in, in Europe uh, and soccer and that. But uh, my uncle was the one that sort of got my brother into it, and then it just trickled down to me, and I wanted to play. And, and now uh, to see me wear the jersey, I guess, that's one thing they, they got to be proud of, and, and, and to be here in Toronto with my family, and, and to, uh, to, to, to be here and just to be a Leaf and, and have some fun and to be closer to my family is always great too. Why are you such a big Leaf fan? Just because when I come to this country, one of my countrymen played for Maple Leafs, his name was Frank Mahovlich. The big M. Big M. I come to live in Toronto and I, that was my city. And back home, your city is your team, not, not cheering for somebody outside. Gardens was something special, you know, it, it, it was just something special that nobody else in hockey had. So talk about bringing your son up as a Maple Leafs fan. Well, you can see what the result is. He's all Maple Leafs and nothing but. So the tradition is going to continue. I hope I come here many years to come, but somebody's going to replace me when I can. My name is Daniel Herseg and I'm from Newmarket, Ontario. I've been a Leaf fan for 40 years since the day I was born. Really, he brought me to my first game and uh, I was really young. I was a Tiger Williams fan and uh, it was my first time seeing Tiger Williams live and it wasn't long after that that he got traded. So. And you cried. Yeah, I cried a river. It's just the passion not only the fans have for the Maple Leafs but also the passion the Maple Leafs themselves create with the fans. Um, growing up in a household, it was a uh, ritual. You know, every Saturday night we watched hockey, and uh, how can you not be a Leaf fan when uh, you see your dad so passionate about them, right? So. I probably went to maybe two or three when I was younger. Uh, tickets were a little bit pricey, and uh, they had to uh, they had to pay for my hockey. So we'd always go to 7-Eleven, me and my brothers and my cousins, and. We get uh, those big six-liter uh, Slurpees and chips and dips, and we'd come home and we'd sit in front of the TV and start getting a Slurpee. And yeah, I remember watching the playoffs uh, the one year with the Leafs uh, when Doug, Doug Gilmer had the, the wraparound behind the net against St. Louis. Uh, there was a few games. I think another one was watching uh, watching Pops after they beat uh, I think it was Detroit there, right? In uh, the one series, and Pops was spraying the water bottle. Uh, but it's pretty funny uh, watching a few of those those old time videos uh, when, when I was watching them when I was younger to, to now seeing them now that, that I'm here. Make no mistake, it's the area that could spell the difference in making the Leafs a playoff threat or just one that hopes to be there in 12 weeks. It's perfect. No, it's not. It's perfect. I can't read it. And they're indecipherable, Joe. That's perfect. Let me read this again. Okay, here we go. And keep his mic down. Three, two, one. Roll gold up track. Track it here. Don't let him talk yet. Wait, 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 Joe. Wait, wait. Open his mic. Don't talk yet. Wait. Wait. Q. One of the most contentious and When you're building a television crew, I think one of the most important things is you're looking for people who have attitude. You, you, you can teach certain things, you can teach hockey to people, but you can't teach attitude. And I think the one thing that separates our group is A, their talent, and they have unbelievable attitude. And it's like you're given people. We've asked for certain people to definitely be on this crew. Coming on camera in three, two, one, on camera. Sound on goal, go. Here's the big line early on. Right here's the big goal. Let her go, track it. Quick, high, slow, patience, and then shoot it so they can get it back. Go punch. 
Craig McDonald. I've been working in mobile television for 30-something years, I would say. Started in, the, started in the early 80s. Tonight we have 14 cameras, uh, which several are, a couple are robotic, a couple are unmanned. We have uh, six man cameras tonight. You feel a bit of a weight of responsibility in that it's your friends and your neighbors and it's something that everybody talks to you about the next day, whether, you know, rarely negative, but there's always comments on, wow, that game last night, or, you know, it's, it's something that's shared. It's a sort of a common thread shared by everyone around us. And in Ontario, really, there's, no, there's nothing like it, obviously. It's the straw that stirs the drink, and it's, you know, which we all grow up watching them, and uh, it's part of, part of our culture, right? So it's amazing that I've landed here and have the luck to be on this, for sure. It's a, it's, it's a gift. Think of an underground web beneath us, mass and mass, miles and miles of cable that interconnect, basically like an old television switchboard. We have the Air Canada Centre here and we have our station over here and a mad scientist at the helm patching us up together. A typical workday usually starts seven to eight hours before the game is even on TV. Crew is comprised of two positions, uh, a techno group and a production group. The production group comes up with the ideas and the, the technical crew takes that idea and execute it, whether it be the cameraman, uh, the audio operator, the transmission person. A typical game can be anywhere from 10 to 40 people just to get one game to your home. I think that when you're sitting at home as a Leaf fan like I did when I was a kid, all I ever wanted to find out was about my team. I'm into this to bring out the best in these guys. Every game, this crew treats it like it's a playoff game. We don't get a lot of games. We want to make sure that all the ones we do are special. And I think the most important thing that we bring is every night there's a commitment to the team to put the best players in the best possible light we can. We show them in high definition, up close, make them sound good. We hear them when they're on the ice. That's what I love to deliver to the fans. It makes me happy to be able to provide the fans with the, everything that you see and hear when you watch TV. The TV crew are a hard-working bunch of dedicated people that are so talented. It's amazing the people that we have put together here and uh, the appetite is endless for the stuff that they're creating, which is, is second to none. I think for me it's being on, uh, on my game every night and if it's helping the team out by, by drawing a penalty or, or, or by by getting on someone's nerves and getting their, their best players off their games. It's, 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 it's anything to help the team, to help them win. And I think you watch a guy like Darcy Tucker that had a lot of heart and, and the way he played, he was, a, he was the heart and soul of the release. He plays the game hard, he gets in guys' faces and he's, he can also put the puck in the back of the net and then create chances. This guy right here, he wore number 16 for the Toronto Maple Leafs and he can do whatever it takes. You want him to go out there and fire things up, get the people in the stands on their feet, cheering their names, getting the crowd going, he can do it all. Number 16, Darcy Tucker! I run into people that are Leafs fans. It doesn't matter what part of Canada I'm in. Uh, wherever I go, somebody wants me to sign their jersey or uh, take part in something that uh, you know they saw as a kid, um, saw me play uh, with the Leafs or, or us as a group play for the Leafs. It's, it's a great feeling and makes you feel proud of uh, being a Leaf and, and uh, Leaf Nation. Today at this arena here in, in uh, Lloydminster, we're going to be running a series of on-ice clinics. Stuff like this is very special. To have these guys and bring them back to what they love to do, and that's play the game and give back to the game. And give it back to these kids. Now the kids get fired up, all of a sudden you got an unbelievable hockey clinic. I live in the city of Toronto. Uh, played for the for the Leafs for an extended period of time. I have fond memories and, and a great belief in, in, in being part of the organization. Uh, I always give back when I can to uh, the local charities on behalf of the Leafs, and, and, and I'm known as that. So I carry myself in high regard because I was part of the organization. The city of Toronto needs that. They, they need a winner. They need a team that can uh, compete for the cup. And bringing a guy like Boland was uh, was the right thing to do. You, know, you give a uh, Stanley Cup champion, a born winner, a guy that played in the local ranks in Toronto. Um, great atmosphere for for him and his family to be around as a, as a, as a player there. And 
Um, understanding and knowing a little bit about the city, I think he understands that uh, what it is to be a Leaf, uh, how much privilege uh, comes along with that, and expectation as well. If you're able to handle the pressure and, and the scrutiny that goes along with that, if you embrace going to the grocery store and talking about the game and, and uh, letting the fans into your um, personal life, then you can be successful. And I think the guys that are the most successful are the guys that are very open with their personalities and have that, uh, they're able to interact with the fans and have that one-on-one -on -one, uh, kind of blue collar mentality. Uh, you know, you can go down to the local grocery store and um, you're buying bread like everybody else is. It's, it, I think it's beneficial to be like that in Toronto. I could see him being that type of person. You always like to help out around the neighborhood and, and do anything you can. You guys have a, like we have a, we have a busy season and, and with everything you want to help out and, uh, and to do what we can. But, but yeah, even later on to, to be an ambassador or something like that it would always be in the back of my head. It's, uh, I think once you're, you're a Leaf, you're always a Leaf. So it's, uh, it's one of those things. You know sitting around in Chicago and they wanted to sort of get a, uh, a foundation going. And I lived there for, for a few years then and it was always, uh, Chicago was always great to me so I just wanted to, wanted to help and give back to Chicago and that's where we started it. So uh, we do uh, the Remix Project, now we do Easter Seals and uh, we do one in, uh, in Chicago called Beyond the Ball and uh, we donate uh, money to them and we, we'd help them out. And, uh, my buddy Derek Chankar, he holds the, uh, he's one of the, the guys that work at the Remix Project to help uh, youth kids get out of trouble and to help them do better things with their life and to help them out. But uh, they were the ones that started up and I think now that I'm here in Toronto, I'd like to keep that going and, and, and do stuff here in Toronto and to, to build it here. So hopefully I have many more years to come here and to, uh, to play here, but uh, I want to help out in any kind of way. I know with the Toronto fans coming to the rink every day and, and supporting us, it's nice to, to support them and to, to help out with the community. There's a little, uh, a little crack just where my uh, shin pad meets my, my skate and the skate just went right in the, right there. It was, a, uh, it was probably one in a million that it would happen, and to, to get that spot. But uh, it was a fluke play. Things like that happen in hockey, and you just you let them go. Sort of uh, right after it happened, we, we got to the hospital. We I waited a few hours to get to surgery. Uh, I was a little busy in the in the in the in the, uh, in the hospital, so. We got in there, I think I went in at 6 a.m. or that uh, to get the surgery all done and was out and wheeled myself to the airport. I got on the, on the flight and I was back home to Toronto. Uh, and then from there, I was just sitting at home. Uh, I couldn't really do much. Uh, I, couldn't, I was on crutches and you can't stand on it and uh, you can't put weight on it for, I had to put, put weight on it for about three weeks. So the first few months were uh, pretty lazy, pretty boring. Uh, it was just a lot of Apple TV getting done at my house and watching a lot of TV shows. So uh, from there, it was uh, in a walking boot, and then it was walking in that and trying to get around and starting to do upper body work inside. And the, uh, the trainers were working on my ankle, getting my rotation and the flexibility back. And from there, it was walking without a boot and then running and getting on a bike, and now it's uh, on the ice. And, now it's just the last leg of it, uh, just getting the ice work done. I think this is the uh, the crucial time that I'll be on the ice and getting everything back, my lungs, my, my legs, and it takes a little bit of while for it to come back, but I think right when I get it back, I'll, I'll know when I'll, when I'll be ready. It's just coming in here my first year, I get to, I think I get to know Bells and, and Marty and Abed and, uh, and Paul a little, bit, a little bit more. They've been great in what they do and the, they've been the best, so I think uh, they've helped me out a lot with with being out for two months. I think uh, when you're out that long, you, you don't know what to do with yourself. Uh, you almost want to lose it, but uh, I think they've been great with me by keeping me positive and, and just keeping me on the right track. Dave's injury is a little more unique in the sense that you don't really see too many of those types of injuries where uh, you get lacerations uh, of major tendons. So uh, the recovery is a little more in-depth, uh, requires a little more time, a little more patience. And uh, I mean, Dave's a great, great patient you could say he's a hard worker and uh, 
anything we ask of him, he does, and uh, he seems to excel pretty, pretty quickly. My name is Ahmed Sindwani. I'm the assistant athletic therapist with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, I've been at this role here for uh, four years. Yeah, I think one of the biggest factors with, uh, with those guys is uh, trust, really. You build a good relationship with them, a good trust with them, um, and you try to incorporate multiple avenues of therapy to, to improve their, their injury and, and help them along their recovery. I'm Anthony Belzer. I'm the strength and conditioning coach with the Toronto Maple Leafs since 2008. Myself and that whoever that particular player is and at that time are, are working towards the same goal, which is uh, not only to get him back, but to get him back uh, better than, than when he last went out. Uh, it's an opportunity to kind of use, uh, use it as a silver lining and then find the positive aspect and the fact that we get to you know, train and, and, and improve uh, other parameters at the same time that we work on the injury and uh, make them stronger than ever. So I think for me it's rewarding to see them come back like that. And uh, I, I guess in some respect, you know, you develop a, a bond and that, you know, you're working towards the same goal. They're competitive athletes, so they, they want to do anything they can to get, get that edge and to, to, to move ahead with his injury. So um, for the most part, I would say that uh, the guys, they listen well. They take the information we give them, the doctors give them, our, our trainers, uh, strength guys. Uh, we kind of put all our information together and, and channel it to the, to the athlete. And the athlete is pretty receptive in uh, understanding um, the magnitude of the injury and the progress that he needs to take to, to get to that next level. To see that player work hard for me is, uh, I think, where that bond comes from. So, you know, just to encourage them or to see them working and to be able to, to be a part of uh, how motivated and how focused they are. And there's a lot of ups and downs and, and there's a lot of times when you know, the setback is challenging. But to see those guys uh, work through that is, I think, where that comes from. Just to, to be a part of that, that segment of their, uh, of their challenge. What I really, I think, appreciate more than anything else is what the players go through to, to play in this city in front of these fans with all the media pressure. So that's kind of what I've... I've noticed. I think to really see Toronto in comparison to other places to really understand what it means is, is to just have a part of a heritage and, and an adoration and uh, a specialness that uh, is, is above and beyond just being in the National Hockey League. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to be a Toronto Maple Leaf aside from the, the unique aspect of being in the NHL. And you guys, you guys really appreciate it and they really they embrace it. I think the players, uh, they want to go to that next level. They want to do whatever they can to to make sure they, they, they compete every year. And uh, I, I think when it comes down to it, they want to win for, for the fans, for the city, uh, for each other. What do you think it means to be a Toronto Maple Leaf? Yeah, it means a lot to be a Toronto Maple Leaf. I know growing up here and, 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 uh, and seeing what they've done and what's gone on with, uh, with the Leafs, uh, it's, a, uh, it's, it's, it's the, one of the best organizations in the league. Uh, you see going back to, to when they're winning the Cups and, and with uh, the, the players that, are, that have been around here, uh, it's a uh, it's a privilege to wear the the Toronto Maple Leaf on that on your chest and and to play here at the ACC. So I think uh, it's a it's it's a huge privilege to be here and and I thank them for for bringing me here to to be here with the Toronto Maple Leafs.